Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash figure out your life with over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, and Kindle. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to Figure Out Your Life Podcast, the show where we try to find the answers to life's everyday problems. I'm your host, Toy T, and uh, I seem to be in a silly mood right now, but uh, I think it's a good thing. So uh, I'm going to cut right to it. No silliness, no, um, you know, other also known as I'm just me today. Uh, maybe because this topic is kind of serious, but before I get into it, I want to do some updates, tell you guys how I am. Um, yes, this podcast is late. (laughs) It's Friday. I usually drop on a Monday, but you know what? Um, you know, done is better than not done at all. Late is better than never done. And, um, I'm just all about getting things out there and not worrying about, you know, what I promised you guys. Like I'm I'm usually consistent, but, uh, as some of you know, if you follow me on my personal Instagram, uh, you know that I had a death in my family recently. So, you know, 2020 has been a, a mixed bag so far for me. Um, you know, my, uh, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, died at age 97 in, uh, on the Island of Dominica, where my family is from. And I had to make an emergency trip, uh, to Dominica to, uh, attend her funeral. And so, um, last week it was just crazy because, um, I got the news about her dying on the Sunday. So Sunday, the 5th, which is when she died, January 5th, 2020, Uh, And this year she would have been 98 if she had made it to March 21st. But I got the news from my dad who had already already gone down because she was uh, in the hospital. She had had a stroke um, and they said that she had pneumonia and that she wasn't talking. So my father pretty much was like, my mother didn't say, you know, Merry Christmas, couldn't say Merry Christmas to me because she was sick. I got to go down there. And so he went down there. Unfortunately, by the time that he arrived, uh, in Dominica because it is so freaking difficult to get down there. And I'll tell you in a second. And some of you saw my Instagram videos and saw how long it took me to get there, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, by the time he got there, um, she had already died before he went to go see her. So, uh, Sunday he had called me and let me know, um, which I think was soon after he found out. And then, uh, by Monday he had said that he wanted to have the funeral, most likely on the Friday or the Saturday because he was supposed to, he had already had a return ticket for the the following Sunday and he wanted to get it done while he was there. So, um, that is why it's like he did, he planned the funeral in five days. So he said the funeral was going to be on the Friday. And so my mom decided that, you know, she wanted to come too. So we had to go and find emergency tickets. So Monday, I spent all of Monday pretty much, um, last Monday after I recorded my, uh, fun episode about less life lessons from, reality TV. I spent the rest of the day looking for plane tickets to, uh, Dominica from Boston. And let me tell you, that was, um, besides the fact that it, you know, it's a last minute trip and, you know, I was traveling due to bereavement. So I was looking for bereavement rates from different airlines. And what I found out is that there are quite a few airlines that do not have bereavement rates, which is like what, (laughs) okay. I don't know why y'all have to be so callous. I mean, all you need to do is get proof of death um, to be able to give people last minute deals. So I'll tell you that uh, I had had to, of course, I did my Googles because, you know, um, Toya T with the PhD uh, loved to do her Googles. And so I did the Googles and found out that there was a select few of airlines that still do uh, bereavement rates. Um, Usually my family travels on American, but American apparently got rid of their bereavement rates, I think in 2017. So boo-boo to American Airlines. They've they've gotten really expensive and really cheap with the stuff that they offer to people. And once I use my free ticket that I have on them, I think I'm pretty much just going to avoid American Airlines um, like the plague because they're going to be on some 
I'm only going to take it if I have to and, and you're the only option because they're really, really getting stingy with um, with the services that they provide to people. But so I found that it was a couple of them. The only one that was an, uh, an option was uh, JetBlue. Apparently JetBlue does not let you know on their website that they are, that they offer bereavement rates. But I had found somebody's website who had you know done the research for somebody else. And they were like, you know, this is the list. This is updated. Um, JetBlue is one of those that doesn't tell you. But if you call them, they will give you a bereavement rate, which I think was like 15 to 20 percent off of your ticket, which would have been great because the the prices that I was seeing was like in the thousands. Uh, and if you don't know where Dominica is, Dominica is in the Caribbean. If you still don't know where it is, it's in the southern Caribbean, a lot closer to the more popular islands like uh, Barbados, um, St. Lucia. Um, you know, clo- like in the lower half, like Trinidad, uh, much closer to South America than it is to North America. And so um, I say all this to say that like it, it's, it's close enough to the U.S. that it shouldn't take as long as it took me to get there. Um, but because of several uh, things, including the fact that it doesn't have an international airport, it's really hard to get there. So you have to take you have to take a smaller plane from another island to get there. You can't get a direct flight to get there, unlike you know places that have international airports, which you can take larger planes. So you know if I wanted to go to Barbados, which is where we flew back from, um, you can get a direct flight from Boston to Barbados. Boom, no problem, get there. Uh, but for Dominica, no, you have to have uh, you have to try different several different things. So what ended up happening was that I saw some flights through JetBlue. It was about a um, thousand over a thousand dollars, which crazy because anywhere else that has an international airport and doesn't involve doing all these crazy, you know, different ways to try to get there is much lower. I probably could have gotten to Barbados for like five hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars, like a last minute ticket. Uh, but not for Dominica. So. Uh, I called JetBlue and was on was on hold for 20 minutes. I'm like, yo, for real, really, 20 minutes. So I was on the, on the line for 20 minutes. Just had my phone open, had it, you know, on speakerphone, and waited. The, and it doesn't doesn't even give you the option that they can just you can just like say like, oh, can you call me back when it's my time to be on the line? No, you got to be on. You got to stay on hold. So I stay on hold. And then homegirl finally answers the, answers the line, right? And she, I'm like, yeah, I need to go. I, I need bereavement rates to go from Boston to Dominica for two people. Um, you know, my grandmother died and I need to get down there. I, I'm trying to leave at least by Wednesday, but I'm open to leaving on Thursday um, or Tuesday. I don't know if I said all that, but I, you know, I, I was already like, you know, just, just very, uh, you know, distracted and, you know, still dealing with my own feelings about my grandmother dying. Um, and so like, and the fact that I was on hold for 20 minutes. So I was like, you know, I told her and she's like, okay, I see one flight from Boston to Dominica. And I was like, yeah, I know because I freaking did my Googles, but whatever. I let her talk. And she's like, okay, there's this flight. I was like, okay, cool. She's like, but when I can see here, there is, um, the connecting flight is full. Okay. Thanks for calling JetBoo. Bye-bye. I said, what? Are you serious? This lady just hung up on me. Okay. And I thought about calling back to see like, oh, can I get other options? But like at that point, it was already like in the evening. I don't think I had lunch or dinner yet. I mean, like I know that I was hungry. I know I had been sitting there looking at all these different websites to find the best deal, find the best flight. All the flights involved having to stay overnight, except for this flight. This flight that I was trying to get from JetBlue would have got me to Dominica in the same day. I think it would have been like... um, I think the total hours of the flight was like 11 hours or something. I think it was a flight from Boston to St. Martin and then, or maybe it was Boston to Puerto Rico and then Puerto Rico to, yeah, it was Boston to Puerto Rico and Puerto Rico to um, Dominica on the, on their sister, you know, smaller airline Seaborn. And it would have been perfect because I, we would have left on the Wednesday and got there on the Wednesday Eat, you know, like left early Wednesday morning and gotten there Wednesday, um, like late afternoon. And homegirl just like, you know, cut me off and, and, and was like, okay, thanks. for." I was like, okay. So I was just like, what the fuck just happened there? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all I can say. What happened? And um, so because that happened, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it directly. Like, you know, um, I have 
emergency savings, even though I am unemployed, I've said it several times, like that don't mean that Toya T ain't got no money. Toya T got money in the bank, shorty what you drank, because uh, I have been listening to all these financial um, gurus that have pretty much said like, you know, you need to have emergency funds for this purpose right here. So I was like, you know what? I have the money. I have the money in my black bank, which is one United Bank, bank, because, you know, I do um, bank black, (laughs) you know can't I gotta walk it like I talk it uh and I like it because I can't easily get the money out so like I know I have a like I have like a good amount of money in there so I was like okay I'll charge to my credit card and I'll you know I'll be able to pay it that way it's not a problem I'm just gonna pay whatever and take whatever flight makes the most sense so we end up getting a flight from from Boston um to like leaving on on Wednesday night so our flight would be leaving at 11 59 p.m from Boston and arriving in San Juan Puerto Rico at like four o'clock in the morning right um and would be a nine hour layover to take a flight on Liat which oof as my mother calls it says like it's known in the Caribbean as leave at leave island anytime (laughs) because they're never on time. So uh, we had like a nine hour layover for a flight that was leaving in the middle at like two o'clock to go from from Puerto Rico to Antigua and then take another plane from Antigua to Dominica and get to Dominica at like 530. Um, but because my, you know, my mother's a little, you know, older, she's not old, she's older. I like to call her old, but she's older. She's in her sixties. And my dad had taken that same flight down and he said it was miserable because he didn't get a hotel. He was like, Oh, it's too expensive. Like I'll rather just like stay around in the airport and just like hang out there. And he said it was just so miserable and so tiring. And that's probably, that's actually part of the reason why he didn't get to see my grandmother before she died because he took that flight, got to Dominica, you know, the next day. So he left on the Friday, got there on the Saturday. And then he had rented a car to, you know, to be able to drive himself around the, you know, the country because he knew he was going to be there for a while. Um, And he was just so tired from the fact that he had stayed, he was, he had arrived in Puerto Rico at like three or four o'clock in the morning, was in the airport, like, you know, sitting on these chairs, just up. And then he had to drive himself, you know, like an hour, like from the airport to, where he was staying and so he went to sleep instead of going straight to the to the to the hospital and if he had gone straight to the hospital he would have he would have he would have my grandmother he would have met my grandmother before she died like I feel like she was holding on but she couldn't hold on that much and I think she kind of felt like maybe I think like in spiritually she felt that he was there and then it was like you know what one of my children is here I can I can go now so um but that was part of, like part of the problem. Like you just can't get there directly and it's just long and boring and it's just long and horrible. So my mom was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to do this whole, you know, sleeping, trying to sleep nap and on, you know, in the airport, you know, sleeping on the ground. Like, you know, she has back issues and she's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get a hotel room, even though it's like for a couple hours, like it'd be good to like just sleep on a bed. Great idea. Although it costs $250. That's with the tax. And we got there. Well, let's say we checked in like four I say we checked in at five o'clock in the morning because it was five o'clock in the morning because that's when the breakfast started because we went the breakfast and we went straight to bed. We checked in five o'clock in the morning. Check out at 12. So we checked out at 12. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Like what the. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. People like taking advantage of people. I mean, I understand that Puerto Rico has had several. I mean, Puerto Rico just suffered. Um a uh an earthquake a major earthquake not in not in um not in san juan but like just in general i know that they were still they're still recovering from hurricane maria but damn i'm I'm, and i'm pretty sure the hotel the airport hotel at in san juan and san juan airport is not owned um by the by the country it's probably owned by some other foreign like some foreign um you know um business or whatever but that is highway robbery like when we, I mean, it was good. Cause I, got, I, as soon as I went, as soon as I got into the bed, I, I was knocked out. Okay. Best decision ever. Cause when we got up and we were like ready to, you know, start getting ready for our flight. Cause it was at two something. We were fresh as a daisy where we were able to take a shower and good thing too, because, uh, turns out that our flight leaving from Puerto Rico to, um, to uh Antigua was late it was like over an hour late and we had like a really short layover and my mom went to go talk to the the gate agent and she's like oh no no everyone's flight you know connecting flight they're gonna make it like we know blah 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 so 
we finally, you know, leave Puerto Rico, get on the flight to Antigua, you know, like, you know, after it was supposed to leave. We get to Antigua um, and they, you know, as soon as we got off, they're like, is anyone here on, you know, that is here for the the connecting flight to Dominica, like come to the front of the line. We're going to get you on the flight. The the plane is waiting for you. So there was like a couple of us. It was probably half the plane, (laughs) not half of the plane that we're on, but half of the plane that was going to leave for Dominica was on my connecting flight from Antigua. And so, um, we all, you know, ran through security again, ran through customs, um, and then ran through a lot of customs. We, we, we ran through like, you know, like the gates and security and all that other stuff got on the plane, right? The plane takes off. <laughs> the plane takes off. We get ha- like the flight between um, Dominica and Antigua is about 40, 40, 45 minutes, like 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Right. But it, but th- this time it was already getting dark. And I told you that Dominica doesn't have an international airport. So we fly. We're almost to Dominica. And all of a sudden the 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 pilot gets on the, the PA and um <laughs> You think he was going to say like, hey, everybody get ready. We're about to like, you know, please like, you know, get, get yourself prepared. We're going to be landing soon. Instead, he said, you know what, because of what, because of strong winds, we're going to be turning the plane around. He was ready to turn the plane around. We're going to be turning the plane around or turning to Antigua um, because we're, we're, we're not going to try to uh, land in Dominica, which is really hard to land in because I mean, it's, it's mountainous. There's, um, and they usually, I think, approach from the mountains when it's like when the weather's bad, because I mean, they're really used to like flying, but they, but they prefer to do it when they can see, um, if they, if it's, if it's a little bit later, they'll come from the sea. Like there's two different ways to come. You can come from the mountain side or you can come straight from the sea right onto the, on the runway. Um, but they, that is a harder way to do it. And so they decided to turn back around we we're like, what the hell? <laughs> Like, why can't we get there? Right. And the funeral is the next day. This is Thursday and the funeral is Friday. So, um, what ended up happening is that uh, they booked us on the flight for the next morning, 6 a.m. So the, the funeral was at 3 p.m. So we just wanted to be able to get there. I was like, I know I didn't fly all this way, pay all this money, and then I'm not going to be there for the funeral. That's just, just ridiculous. But um, the 6 a.m. flight, they had booked us on it. And then they were like, because this was um, an act of God, uh, inclement weather, and we canceled it, uh, we will not be providing accommodations for any of y'all. And Yo, some of these folks were just like losing their minds. The lady was like, can I see the manager, supervisor? This lady said, I am the supervisor. She said, can I see somebody above you? And me and my mom was like, you know what? Forget it. We got travel insurance, um, luckily. So we're just going to find ourselves a place to stay. And we will we will take this up with the travel insurance company, not with the airline. They can do whatever they want to, but we're going to get our money back. So we ended up staying in a guest house. A couple, I think most of the people that was on our flight ended up staying at this guest house that was five minutes away from the airport. Um, spent the night there next morning, 6 AM flight left on time. We got to Dominica. So cool. Got to the funeral. So, um, but in the, at the end of it, it took 33 hours for me to get to Dominica, 33 hours. I arrived the day of my grandmother's funeral and we were leaving on Sunday. So, um, that is what I was, I have been going through and that's why we came back Sunday night. So that's why there was no podcast on Monday because I just, I didn't have it. When I woke up on Monday, I was like, this is a free day. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not doing anything at all because I'm tired. It's just tiring, tiring, tiring. It's a lot. I'm emotionally drained. I'm physically drained and I just can't do it. I ain't got it. I thought that I could get it for the rest of the week, but I had other things, you know, uh, planned for the week that I would have been able to get done if I hadn't had to take an emergency trip home to Dominica. So with that, um, I think you guys know what the, uh, what the, um, the topic of this, of this uh, episode is I, you know, I, I skipped right to it, but we're not starting the topic of the episode until like 19 minutes in, but it's okay. It's all, it's all within the story. So, um, as you know, already the, today's podcast is figuring out how to deal with loss and grief. And I thought this would be really important because I'll tell you one thing about myself is that I have not really had that much experience with death. I've been very fortunate that, um, my family members have pretty much just lived like my close family. Like they just, they have, they're still alive. Um, you know, for a long time, I had all four of my grandparents until my, uh, grandfather died when I was like 13. My maternal grandfather died when I was 13. Um, and I wasn't able to go to that funeral cause it was in the middle of the school year and my mother didn't want to take me out. So she went by herself. 
um, with all her siblings. And so I never, I didn't have to experience that. And I, and I think the first funeral that I had ever attended was, I think the first funeral that I like as like, like a person that can remember things like as an adult, semi-adult, um, is the funeral of my best friend's mother. And so that was like really hard for me because I had never like been to a funeral uh, that I can remember. Like I, apparently I had gone to a funeral when I think when I was like a baby, but of course I didn't remember that. So this was like, that was like my first funeral of someone like, you know, that I knew. And then after that, my grandfather died, my paternal grandfather died. Um, and so I went to that, but if you're talking about my direct family members, like my immediate family, um, my, so I told you that my, 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 my maternal grandfather died when I was 13. My paternal grandfather died when I was like in my twenties. So he died, I think in 2008. Um, and my, and just now my paternal grandmother just died and I'm like 36. So, um, and none of my aunt, like only one of my aunts on my father's side has died, but I wasn't really close with her. And, um, so I didn't go to that funeral and none of my mother's siblings have died. Um, I had one aunt by marriage that has died. I didn't go to that funeral either, but, um, so pretty much I'm just telling you, I haven't been to too many funerals except for like now, uh, quite a few of my friends have um, unfortunately lost their parents. So I've been to a couple of like wakes and funerals because of that. Um, but I really don't have like a real, uh, I don't have an extensive experience with grief and loss. And so I felt like this would be appropriate to do um, for anybody else who hasn't really experienced that. And um, just giving you some some ideas on how I'm dealing and how, um, how to deal with someone who is grieving. So if you're someone like me who probably has more experience with friends or family members that have dealt with death and you haven't as much, um, this is also going to be helpful too. So I'm going to give you tips and strategies on how to deal with that. So uh, just beginning the the process, um, the, the episode. So loss is a natural part of life. This is what I'm getting from my research because I had to research it because um, – as I said, I don't really know much. So loss is a natural part of life, but we can still be overcome by shock and confusion leading to prolonged periods of sadness or depression. This is what we call grief. Uh, coping with the loss of a close friend or a family member may be done. Maybe one of the hardest challenges that many of us face when we lose a spouse, sibling, or parent, or a very close friend, our grief can be particularly intense The sadness typically diminishes in intensity as time passes, but grieving is an important process in order to overcome these feelings and continue to embrace the time that you had with your loved one. And I can know, I know for sure that I've heard many people say, especially when it's like one of their parents, that you never stop grieving. Like the pain, you know, the pain diminishes, but you are always missing that person. You are always in a state of grief. It's just not the beginning stages or the intense stages. Like there, there are moments when you think about this person that you've lost. Um, maybe it's their birthday, maybe it's the holidays, maybe it's, you know, your birthday or some special, um, you know, you have some, like you see a picture or something or watch a video of, you know, something that you did with this, this loved one, or maybe you have a significant milestone in your life and that person is missed. That person is not there because they died. Um, that can really like bring up feelings, but it's, you know, I'm talking about this cause I think it's just really important to, uh, be able to know how to deal with that. And I'm, I'm, I'm really just interested in this because I want like me personally, I can tell you that I wasn't, uh, that close with this, this grandparent, like I'm not that close with my father's side of the family, uh, for various reasons that I'm not going to get into right now, but, uh, I'm much closer to my mother's side of the family. Like I, I mean, some people already know, um, you know, I grew up in a single parent household. My mother pretty much raised me, but the beginning stages of my life when I was just like an infant, not an infant, but when I was like, you know, still developing in the toddler stages, I wasn't with my mother consistently. Like at at one and a half, my, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, uh, took me, (laughs) um, back to Dominica with her. And I lived in Dominica on, on, you know, until I was five and able to start kindergarten in, um, in the U S and she did that because, you know, my mother was a single parent. She was working in like two jobs and she wanted to to her to be able to, you know, work on herself and be able to, 
um, not have to worry about, you know, taking care of a child. So, um, you know, my first memories were in Dominica with, you know, living with my grandparents, my granny and my, and my grandpa and with my, some of my mother's siblings and some of my cousins, because, you know, some of them were still living at home. So I, I, that's how I, that, that's how I, that's how my early development stages were, was that I was with my maternal, uh, my maternal grandparents and my mother's side of the family. Um, so, uh, even though my my paternal grandparents were living in Dominica at the time, I don't think I don't really remember having that much interactions with them during that period. But every time I went down with my mom, like, you know, I would go see my my grandmother um, and so on and so forth. But I, I just didn't have like a strong relationship with my father's side of the family, which I've I've had discussions with my father now as an adult about it. Um, but we can't go back in time and fix things. And so, um, you know, I. uh I am still trying to process how I like my feelings about I'm getting like teary eyed now. Uh, my feelings about like my grandmother dying. Um, but I know for sure that it's not the feel, the feelings I'm having of loss, um, is not as intense as it will be when my last grandmother, my maternal grandmother dies, um, which I'm not looking forward to. So, but so I'm like mostly just kind of interested in this topic as in how to, um, how to be there for my father. Gosh, I'm getting to you right now, but anyway, so, um, continuing. So, so now you have some backstory on like how I'm like where I am with it, but like for my father, I know he's being hit really hard by this and, um, he is, his, I just wanted to understand grief more to understand how to be there for him. So first things first, I'm just happy that I made it down to the funeral, even though, uh, the travel universe and the travel gods was trying to play me. Okay. They were trying to play me. Um, but I, I made it, I was there. Um, and actually I was the only grandchild that was at the funeral. So, uh, that's one thing, but it, it wasn't even about that. It was mostly for the fact that I wanted to make sure that I was there uh, for my father, you know? Um, so continuing, uh, everyone reacts differently to death. That is true. Some people, um, like I know when my, my maternal grandfather died, that was the first time I'd ever seen my mother cry period in my life. Um, because she is not the, the, she's not the emotional type. She's very rational. She's very like straightforward. She's very like, you know, like she doesn't really like dwell in her feelings like that. So if you want to talk about like, uh, I'm, I'm myself, I'm very emotional. One, I'm a cancer. So I'm emotional by nature Two, like my dad is the emotional one and my mom is not. And so <laughs> it's just funny that how that turns out. Like my dad is more likely to cry at something that my mother is. And my mother's like, why are you crying? Stop crying. Why you people like to cry so much. You young people like to cry so much. And I'm like, oh my gosh, mommy, like stop being an ice queen. She hates when I call her that, but like she literally is the snow queen. I swear to God. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not saying she doesn't cry. I'm just saying like, you know, she's not super emotional, but that was the first time I ever seen my mother cry. And um, you know, from my dad, he was kind of, you know, making jokes and stuff, but like, I know he was like crying. He's like, yeah, I've been crying all day, all night. And it's like, yeah, that's something that my dad would do. My mother wouldn't be sitting there crying all day and all night. Um, uh, because she would just accept it as like, you know, this person, my parent is older and death happens and you're sad, but then you don't have to be sitting there crying all day and all night and working yourself up. But, um, Research shows that most people can recover from loss on their own through the passage of time. Like I said, like it just diminishes if they have social support and healthy habits. Hence again, why I want to do this because, you know, I want to be a good social support for my father. And sometimes my mom kind of like, I can't, like, she does really, she's like my inner, she's like, um, she's my outer critic that affects my inner critic. So she constantly tells me that I don't spend enough time thinking about others, which is like crazy because I feel so much for the people that I love. And so, um, even now the tears that I, that were starting to well up wasn't about my grandmother. It was about like my father, um, and his, grieving experience and his loss 
And so um, she also, she like, she's like, you don't ask questions. You don't, you don't like think to reach out. I'm like, lady, I reach out in my own way. She does things differently than I do. And I think sometimes, I think I, I just need to work on like being able to block her out more because, and realize and tell her, like, we just do things differently. I may not ask 15,000 questions because I don't like when people ask me 15,000 questions. So I don't do that. Um, but if, when I care about people, the way I show them is that I'm there. I don't sit there and like, you know, want to ask them 15,000 questions and, you know, get all the details. Like I am there. I show up. Like I said, the most important thing for me to do was to show, to be there for the funeral, to be there for my father, to be there, be present, to be physically there. Um, which I know he really appreciated. And if you're on, if you, uh, look at my personal page and I think I'm gonna put it on the uh, the podcast page too. Um, you see a picture of me and my dad and he's just like, I mean, like, he's like very, like a very, like, just, you know, effervescent, lively person. But right there, he just looks like very, like soft and like, I don't know. It's just like very opposite of what he is, but you can tell that he was happy that I was there. Like he was just very, um, he was just like very, um, I don't want to say he was emotional, but then he was also very uh, affectionate. (laughs) Like I take pictures with my daddy all the time, but he's like, you know, like kissing my head and like, you know, putting his head on mine. I was like, okay, this is a different, this is a different man than I've, that I've known the last 36 years. And so, um, where was I on this? Uh, but you need the, yeah, you can do this if you have social support and healthy habits and it may, it may take months or a year to come to terms with a loss. Um, there is no normal time period for someone to grieve. Grie- like I said, grieving, I feel like is a lifelong thing, depending on who that person is to you, especially if it's a parent or a spouse or a child. Um, I feel like that is something like you're, you're, you're in the grieving process, um, until you die. Like with that, the, I don't think they, ever, I don't think you ever stop grieving in that way. Uh, it's just, you know, it just, you just are able to deal with it better. Uh, But new research, um, also found this, that suggests most people do not go through. So people usually think about the stages of grief. And I thought I was going to go through that, like, you know, like sadness and anger. And then, you know, um, uh, I don't know what contentment or whatever, or acceptance and, all this other stuff. But, um, it's interesting that new research suggests that most people do not go through these stages of grief, grief as progressive stages. So you can't say, oh, this person's in the first stages of grief because since everyone grieves differently and deals with death differently, it makes sense that everyone would go through these stages of grief differently. Like they're not going to go from one, you know, all the way out to seven or whatever. They might go step one, step three, step four, step seven. Like it's all over the place. I feel like watching my father, he's gone through like acceptance. Like when he called me, he was like, you know, your, your grandmother passed and that was it. And it was just like straight to the fact. Um, it wasn't like a teary, you know, like when my, when, um, my best friend's mother died, she called me, she was in full on tears, like sadness, tears. Um, and so like, that just shows you like, just from the initial announcement, two different people are re- like, you know, giving information, reacting two different ways. Um, but after that, he was like, I cried all night. I cried all day. Um, and then I feel like now he's in the anger stage and like resentment, uh, but I won't go into who he's angry and resent, isn't re- resenting right now. But like, I feel like he's just going through all these things. He's blaming himself for not being able to get there on time. He's mad at the air airlines for not being able to get him there. He's mad that he didn't take a taxi from the air, from the airport. Cause he could have, you know, going straight, straight to the air, to the hospital and said he went home to sleep and then thought he could go see her the next day and she was already dead. And so like all these things, um, But, um, however, what's important is to make sure that you're not stuck in any of these stages. So it's, it doesn't matter how you go through the stages of grief. It's most important that you don't get stuck in them. You don't get stuck in them and think and never move out of it towards, towards acceptance, towards, you know, the healing part that we need to be able to process each and move forward. We need to move forward because life is for the living and we have to continue living. Although for some people 
it can be really hard. Like I remember um, just hearing about, uh, if you remember the story of Atiana Jefferson, the one, the young black woman that was playing video games with her nephew um, in her house and a neighbor had made a call to 911, like a, a, um, a safety check or a quality check or whatever. And the police officer, instead of like, you know, knocking on the door, uh, decided to walk around the house and shot her through her window and killed her. Um, and then right after that, the, you know, her funeral and all that stuff, her father died and they just announced that her mother just died. So within a year, um, you know, her parents died and, and it seems like it was due to the stress of this unexpected death. I mean, the mother, I think, was already ailing. Um, but I'm sure it didn't help that, you know, her daughter died in the house where she was living to take care of her ailing mother. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure the father, I think the father died from some like maybe high blood pressure, which yesterday my dad went to the, to the hospital and they said that his blood pressure was like super high. Um, he had an appointment. He was, it wasn't like an emergency thing, but like, I was just really worried. I mean, my mom was like, you know, um, obviously it's from, it's from the stress of the funeral and like, you know, the travel and all this other stuff. And, um, it's understandable, but he needs to, you know, get back to his routine and take care of himself and listen to his doctor. Okay. I had to get into real like strict daughter mode. I said, bruh, listen, man, I had to put it in, I had, I put it in all capitals. So he knew I was serious. I said, you need to take your medication as it is instructed because he hadn't been taking his blood pressure medicine as instructed, especially since, you know, all the stuff that was happening with you know, trying to plan the funeral. And he just took on a lot by himself and didn't really ask for help like he should have. Like, you know, if you asked him, is there anything I can do for you? He'll tell you. But he wasn't like actively asking for help, which I think was a part of the problem. And so, but by the time he, his, his doctor came in, so the nurse took his blood pressure and it was high. But by the time the doctor came in, it had lowered. But it's, it's, you know, it's really serious that we need to be able to take care of ourselves and we need to be able to process death, not lingering it. Um, unlike, you know, Atiana Jefferson's, um, parents who are now, unfortunately also now deceased, um, within a year of the, uh, murder of their daughter. So, um, also if your relationship with the deceased was difficult, so if you had like a rocky relationship, like you, you know, didn't have a relationship with your mother and then she died, like, you know, you guys weren't talking or something like that. Um, this can also add, on, add another dimension to the grieving process. I won't talk about that as much because I really don't have as much examples of it, but it may take some time and thought before you're able to look back on the relationship and adjust to the loss. So if you already had issues with this person who died and then they, they die unexpectedly or they, you know, they just die and you haven't resolved it, it, it will add another dimension of grieving and then also being able to um, kind of resolve your relationship issues with that person on top of that. So, but here we come to the actual strategies and tips. So I have, let me just count it out because I didn't really look at, okay, so I have five, um, five strategies on how to deal with um, grief and loss. So here we go. Number one, acknowledge and accept the feelings. <laughs> so people experience all kinds of emotions after the death of someone, um, feelings like anger, sadness, confusion, being overwhelmed, loneliness, frustration, resentment, shock, disbelief, guilt, regret, emptiness, confusion, fear, and many other negative emotions. But this is all normal. Okay. It is normal to feel this. That's why I'm like, my dad's at the anger stage. He was at the acceptance stage. He was at the, you know, remembering stage. He was at all these things. And I've just been like, you know what? I just want to know how best to be there for you as you go through these different emotions that are very different than what I'm going through. Because, uh, as I said, I wasn't, as, I wasn't that close with my grandmother one, but, um, regardless of my relationship with her, he had a way closer relationship with her because that was his mother, you know? And so, um, you know, all these kind of things are just normal and many people avoid suppress or repress these 
these negative emotions because they feel uncomfortable not knowing that these feelings will only make them feel more uncomfortable in the future if they're not processed at the right time. So people think like, you know what? I don't have to, I don't have to tell people that I'm sad. I don't need to be angry. Like it's fine. The person died. I love them. And it's wrong for me to feel mad at them or frustrated or, you know, guilty. It's, it's wrong. And I just, I'm just going to not deal with those, those feelings and, and, you know, move, move on. And it's like, no, you need to acknowledge these feelings and go through the motions. Okay. Go through them and process them because if you don't process them now, it's going to be worse later on. It's going to hit you somewhere and it's going to hit you at the wrong time. I'm telling you. Um, and I've seen this from other examples, like one friend, his wife, um, his pregnant wife died unexpectedly. And, you know, he buried her and then went straight back to work. And then, you know, a couple months later I was talking to him and he's like, you know what? I was just going, going, going. And now that it's like the holidays, I think it was either Thanksgiving or Christmas. He was like, it's really hitting me now because I'm actually having the time to sit down and process it. Like really process it, process the fact that she's not here, process the fact that we would have had a baby at this point, like process all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, like, like I learned from him telling me that, that it's important to process it immediately. And so when I had a student who unfortunately had lost both her parents within a year of being in school, I don't, I remember what year she was. She was like a junior. She wasn't a freshman. She was either a junior or senior. I think she was a junior. Um, and her mother, so her mother died. This is how, this is, this is some, this, this is something that I realized about this, my former students at my former institution. I was like, yo, um, this is why I, I take a very, um, kind of relational and like personal approach to my teaching and how I, how I deal with my students, because I know that they're human beings at the end of the day. Like, you know, they're young, they'll do dumb things, they'll lie, they'll do whatever. But like some of these kids, you know, regardless of how they are, they are still human beings with things going on in the background, especially the ones that are, you know, working full time like this student was to be able to put herself through school because her family, you know, wasn't, you know, didn't have that many financial resources, especially for the fact that, you know, her mother was dying of cancer. Um, and it turns out her father was also dealing with cancer too. So they had a lot of bills from that too. Uh, so she was, you know, trying to be able to pay for her education. Um, and so she was working full time and, you know, is in the middle of the school year. And so she sends me a message saying like, I, I won't be in class you know, um, this week because, uh, so my mom died and I have to go to the hospice care place and plan out the funeral, all this other stuff. And I know there's a paper due this week, but like, um, can I get an extension and turn it in next week? Uh, if not, it's okay. I'll just try to figure out something. And I'm like, are you serious? Do you like, like, I know I don't put off the uh, impression that I'm some kind of cold hearted, like, you know, professor that is like, you need to give me my stuff now. It's so serious. You have to be, you know, you when I have to give you a deadline, you have to, to you know, meet that deadline. I'm like, I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't grade the stuff when you give it to me. So I don't care. I just want, if I give, when I, once I start grading, you, your paper better be there. But if you give me, like, if you contact me ahead of time, like she did, and you have a death in your family, not even just a death, your mother. I said, okay, is, do you want to take next week off too? Because you know, you can turn this paper in like later in the month. Like I'm really not going to grade it by then. <laughs> That's probably one of the time when I'm thinking about grading it, but it's okay. You know, like, you don't have to come to class next week. I can give you all the stuff that we're going to cover. And she said, no, 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 no. I'll be in class next week. And she was in class next week. And I was just like, yo, I don't understand these kids because if my mother died, I'd be gone. I'm like, kids, that's it for the rest of the semester. I will not be back. So, um, hopefully they find somebody to, to cover this, but, um, either way, I don't care because my mama died and I'm getting the hell out of here. Uh, cause I got things, real life things to deal with. Um, but I was just so surprised. And this student had like several classes with me. So she had this class with me and she had a class with me the next semester. And by the next semester, that is when it hit her. And I told her to take time. And then finally she hit me up one week. was like, you know what? I can't, I just can't turn this paper in. I can't come to class this week because like I'm like my mother's death finally hit me and you were right that I should have taken the time and now I feel like I'm, I'm gonna take the time I'm gonna take a mental health day or week and I was like I completely understand um but I got that because of you know what 
I experienced with my friend before that when he said like, you know, I didn't take the time. I just started working and I just kept, you know, I, I buried it and I just kept, I went back to work and I just kept working and I didn't take the time process and it hit me later. And I was like, I didn't want that to hit her later, like in the middle of finals or midterms. And then she's completely derailed. Like, I'm like, take it now, take it now, deal with it. And then, um, it'll be a lot easier for you to be able to manage it because you dealt with the big brunt of it. But you live and you learn. And that's why I, um, I like to use that when I'm teaching is just kind of taking in like real world life stuff. And then also reminding kids, like there are other things that are more important than your academics. Like your academics is important, but there is also your life. There's you, your health and your family's health. Um, I'm not saying that I'm going to give you the day off because, you know, um, you know, you know, (laughs) I don't know you and your boyfriend had a, had a fight. No. (laughs) Um, or your mother decided to call you to come, uh, home to watch your younger sibling. No, 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 no. Unless somebody in the hospital or did. No. Um, there's priorities. Uh, but when it comes to like health, (laughs) take it seriously, take it very seriously. Because if you don't, all the things that you think are, are more important that you're, you're putting your health off for, um, will suffer also it will suffer. So it's best that you deal with your health, um, your mental health, your physical health, uh, deal with your grief and all that stuff at that moment, instead of saying like, you know what, I got to get this paper done or I got to get to work and, and do this. And then I'll deal with it later because when you deal with it later, it's going to be worse. So, uh, where was I on that? So, um, Uh, research shows that people who do not deal with their negative emotions in a healthy way have many more physiological problems as well as psychological problems. Like I was saying uh, about this, like, you know, I, that's why I was advising the student and advise other people to deal with it now, acknowledge your feelings and deal with them now. Don't deal with them later, deal with them now. If you want to cry, cry. My daddy cried all day, all night. He said, after his mother died, good, cry. I want you to cry, 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 cry cry now. (laughs) Um, I saw some tears on him on Wednesday night too. I was like, Oh my gosh, but deal with it so that it doesn't come up later. So it's not like a year later and you are just a wreck because you never dealt with it. And the fact that it can have physiological, um, you know, effects on you. Like I said, my father went to the, went to his doctor's appointment and they took his blood pressure and his blood pressure was super high. That is a physiological effect. Um, your blood pressure can go high, you know, you, and that is something that, um, can lead to like strokes and all, and like, you know, you can develop an ulcer, all kinds of extra health issues. Um, you can develop, you know, like major depression, which, you know, can make things even worse. Like it's just, there's so many things that you have to pay attention to that, that are, that are connected to these feelings, um, that not only affect you psychologically, like, you know, like causing depression, or anxiety or something, but also like causing you to have high blood pressure, causing you to, um, you know, uh, create, uh, develop a, um, a chemical dependency or, uh, like a substance dependency and you're drinking too much. And then all of a sudden now you have like cirrhosis of the liver or you've gotten into an accident because you were drunk all the time because you're not dealing with your feelings. And so, um, it is, it is important to deal with that right away. And the best way to do the, one of the best ways to do that is to talk about the death of your loved one with your friends, your close friends, your colleagues, your pastor, your priest, your, the, you know, your favorite, you know, tree, <laughs> your spiritual advisor, your life coach, your therapist, talk about the death of your loved one, talk it out in order to understand what happened and remember your friend or your, or your loved or your family member. You need to talk about it. You can't deny that they died. You can't just act like, okay, they died. I'm just going to keep going. And it wasn't important to me. Talk it out. Okay. My grandmother died of a stroke that occurred while she was in a nursing home that she was only recently put in, in November. And I believe that she would have still been alive today and made it to a hundred if she had just stayed in her home Unfortunately, her home wasn't as safe anymore because after Hurricane Maria, her whole roof got taken off and my grandmother survived Hurricane Maria. Her hair went gray. She, you know, she had some, some, some physical ailments after that, but she was still, you know, quick as a wit and still alive. And I feel like taking her away from her home, um, you know, caused her 
to go down quickly and that the fact that the people who were working there didn't didn't uh, pay attention to her. I think she might have, my mother thinks that she might have had a stroke and been suffering from a stroke for a whole week because they just saw her lying in the bed and just assumed like, oh, she's just tired or whatever and didn't check on her. <laughs> and so um, that is just really upsetting because the I realize the healthcare in Dominica is just caca. I've lost two grandparents now, two strokes that very much could have been treated and they very much despite their age have lived through if they had had better health care and so I'm talking to you guys about it and talking it out because these are the things that um affect me and especially when my dad talks about like you know maybe moving home back home to Dominica I'm like no no because I'm because I've learned from these experiences what could happen and I don't want that to happen because I will burn down that country swear to god I will burn down that country if I lose my father to a stroke that could have been very much, um, very much treated if he had, pro- if they had proper medical care. Hells no. He better keep his behind here. So I told him, you can go and visit. You can have a couple months there or during the winter months because it's cold as hell. Right now it's like 17 degrees. It's freezing. If you want to be in Dominica right now, great. Go ahead, go. But you, I better find your behind back here when it's warm. Uh, you better be here for a, a, a yearly or six month checkup with your doctor because I ain't doing it. I'm not doing it, not doing it. Okay. But that's me talking it out that you should be able to talk out that kind of stuff. Um, also you should find a safe space to face these feelings, like any kind of safe space. Like I said, talking to someone, a loved one, a colleague, a friend, um, a, a health professional, um, or just finding a, like a safe space in your house, in your neighborhood, wherever, where you can cry, <laughs> where you can maybe go talk to a support group. So maybe at your church or something, uh, where you can read a book on the subject. Like I said, I had to go ahead and just do research on grief, what grief is, um, how do people experience grief? What does it look like? What are the differences of grief? Um, because, you know, I don't have that much experience with it. And so if you need to do that, do that. You know, listen to a podcast, listen to this podcast. Um, journal, pray, meditate, exercise. Do them all. Do one of them. Do two. Do do anything that you need to do that works for you. Whatever makes you feel better, that helps you process your feelings and, you know, gives you some kind of peace. Do that. If you need to go and, you know, plant a tree, you know, if you need to go release some doves, you know, do that if it makes, if it helps you deal with your feelings. All right. Number two, start taking steps to fill up the void within. Now I'm not saying like you can just replace people cause you can't replace people. Uh, but when you lose someone you love and value, there's usually an empty spot within you that craves, that craves your attention that, you know, it's that, that place that they, in you that is now gone. I know for my father, he talked to his mother every single day. And, um, even though he usually liked to say that, uh, my grandmother did not like him and that she preferred my, um, uh, my uncle over her. And he was like, you, she loved Joseph. She doesn't love me. You know, she doesn't listen to me. If I tell her the sky is blue, she's going to say the sky is purple. But if he says the sky is purple, she'll say the sky is purple. Um, but that was just their relationship. You know, that was just a relationship. And I think he's starting to miss that now because, um, from the stories that I was gathering from the funeral and just, you know, people talking, uh, a lot of my personality traits came from my grandmother. One, uh, a lot of my physical traits too, because like my, my fate, like I look like my dad, my dad actually looks like his mom. So there you go. Um, but I learned that she liked to tell a lot of jokes. I mean, I, I mean, my grandmother um, didn't <laughs> my, so in Dominica, they have like two languages, the national language or the cultural language is French Patois. It's like a, it's like a version of, um, it's a Creolized version of French. So like, you know, similar to um, Haitian Creole, which is also like a, you know, a Creolized version of French. So they has a French base, but they've, you know, created their own um, version of it. And so my grandmother spoke Patois to my father all the time. My father speaks Patois, French Patois. And so um, anytime I saw my grandmother, she would like make jokes and stuff in Patois. And I'm like, lady, I, you know, I can't understand it. She speaks English. She spoke English. It was just, she would do that and laugh. And like, you know, as you guys should know by now, I love to laugh and, and make jokes. Um, 
and not in a malicious way, but just like, you know, just, just to lighten the mood. I like, I like to laugh. And if I have to laugh at myself, (laughs) you know, I will do that. I will, if you ain't laughing at my joke, I'll laugh at it. (laughs) Like that's a joke. Uh, And some of my students know that too. Like I would tell jokes all the time in class and have to like, they would think I'm being like super serious. I just like try to break up the tension in the room. Like that was a joke. And they'd be like, oh, I'm like, I guess I shouldn't, you know, quit my J job because like you guys didn't get my joke. (laughs) But, um, you know, she liked to tell jokes and stuff. Um, you know, and they said, like my mother said the last time she saw my grandmother, which was in November, um, that she was just sitting there just like telling stories, like and telling jokes. And the pastor, the priest said the same thing at the funeral that she was telling him, like, you know, like when she would come to services, like she would tell him all of these funny stories from like, you know, back, like way back in the day, uh, cause it's a younger priest. He's, uh, and so, uh, my dad does the same thing too. And as you can tell, I did the same thing too. I, it took me like 19 minutes to get to the, to the topic cause I was telling you a story. And <laughs> So, um, I think he's going to miss that, like, you know, miss having these daily kind of combative conversations and not like an angry, but like, you know, like just, you know, ribbing at each other because there's, I think that because they were so similar and he was the last child, he was the baby. So, um, I think that that kind of played into their relationship. There was a lot of love. Uh, the fact that, you know, pretty much like she signed over the deed to her home and the, and the land to my father, um, says a lot. She signed over her bank accounts to him. So there was like no issue because pretty much once the person dies, it's like really hard to to like transfer over those things. So he got all those things and she told him to do that. She told him to do it as she was getting older. Um, and so I think he's going to miss that. And I think it's the same thing for everyone. Like you have that kind of part of you that is, missing like that you know that person filled like a part of you and you will be craving you know you know that that part of you will be craving attention and so it's important to kind of find a way to fill that void um the closer you are your connection and the more the more intense the loss will be um the more profound the emptiness will feel to you so like I feel like now I need to like call my dad more like I don't I don't call him as much as I should. Um, and I don't go over to his house as much as I should. I do have dinner with my dad at least once a week. And so I'll I'll tell you that, um, had dinner with him this week, even though I saw him on Sunday, (laughs) because we all traveled together back to Boston, which was quite an experience for me because I'd never traveled with my parents before on a flight together. And I had to spend the whole day with them and woof. I was like, I'm never traveling with you two again, ever. (laughs) Woo, they were arguing half the way I was arguing with my mom. Like, it was just like a lot of stuff. I was like, okay, we need a break. But, um, you know, I think that when you're ready, um, and within a reasonable time frame, that you, uh, that you need to find ways to fill up this gap with something positive that makes you feel good and gives you, gives your life a new sense of meaning. So, um, um, before you end up doing this, I, I did see that it says to not make any major changes in your life during this period, such as moving, remarrying. So if it's a spouse and then you don't, don't go and, and remarry like n- the next month, like the new person that's in your life. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. You, your mind is still not straight yet. Don't change jobs. Don't have another child because you lost a child. Like to give it time give it time before you you move on to these major life um these major life changes so you should just give your time yourself time to adjust to your loss but there are some things that you can do so here's some suggestions when you are at that point when you're ready so not major not no major changes until you have fully adjusted but in the meantime when you're ready to kind of start moving forward here are some things you can do so uh definitely take care of yourself and your family focus on yourself uh work out eat well you know, uh, you know, start meditating, you know, start walking, start, uh, you know, start a support group, journal, write down all your feelings, um, do anything that will get you through each day and help you to move forward, uh, reach out and help others dealing with the loss. So if, you know, like I said about, you know, creating a support group, reach out to people and talk to them. And so like for me, the way to deal with, my sense of uh, my loss and my grief is to uh, reach out to my father who is dealing with it on a different level and 
you know, trying to help him get through it as much as he's going to act like he a big man and he doesn't, you know, like, you know, he doesn't need his daughter to come and, you know, do this. I know he appreciates it. Like, I like, again, <laughs> um, it, it's helpful to help others. Helping others has an added benefit of making you feel better as well. So being able to share stories of the deceased can help everyone cope. Like I just, that was probably the best thing that happened about going to the funeral is that I really got to see a side of my father that I had never seen. So, uh, the funeral, you know, people were talking about my grandmother and people were laughing that, you know, the priest was talking about stuff. And then after at the repast, after they buried her, um, you know, my dad was like telling stories with his cousin. So as I said, I'm not really that close to my, my father's side of the family, but what also I have, I have not really seen is like, I've seen my father interact with his friends, but these are friends he made when he was an adult after he moved to the, to America, um, and I got a chance to see my father interact with people who knew him when he was like nine, 10 years old. <laughs> and he was talking about like, I think one of his cousins lived with them, lived with, the, with my grandparents, um, for a bit. And he talks about like, you know, like my grandmother, uh, was a market woman and she also like made bread and, you know, would sell bread. So my father, before he went to school as like a 10 year old, 10, 11 year old had to, and I've heard these, him tell these stories. He had to, um, he had to go and sell the bread before he went to school. And so he said one morning, and this is an added element that I gained from the repast and the funeral. Um, you know, one of his, the cousin that was living with them, which I just met for the first time, he was saying like, you know, he was sleeping on the floor. My father was like, yeah, I was so mad. She called me, you know, I gripped my, my mother said, Hey, come, you gotta go. You have to wake up to go sell the bread. And it's like six o'clock in the morning, like, you know, a daybreak. And he's like, I was so mad. I stepped on you. (laughs) He said, I stepped all on you. He said, what? (laughs) He said, I had no idea. He's like, yeah, I was so mad that she woke me up and didn't wake you up. And here I am, got to wake up and you on the floor sitting there sleeping. So I stepped right on you and, you know, went to go sell, sell the bread. And, um, I just, it was just, it was just like interesting to see like the different side of him that, that kind of came up. He kind of, kind of, he kind of turned a bit childlike because, you know, like I, I saw my father skipping with his friends. Like they were like doing like, you know, like, you know, playing around like, Hey, you know, remember when we used to like play these little childhood games, um, and I wish I had taken video, but I was just like kind of just so um, just dealing with being there myself uh, and just meeting a lot of people. It was just a lot for me. Like I just I'm, I'm not that kind of person that loves meeting tons and tons of people at the same time at, at one time. Um, and he just kept saying like, hey, have you met my daughter? 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 Oh, you're Edmund's daughter. Oh, you're Edmund's daughter. And I was just like, OK, this is a lot. I'm not going to remember any of your names because I'm really bad at remembering people's names when I first meet them. Faces. Cool. Names. It comes in one ear, goes out the other because I just, I just, I'm, I'm trying to process, but it just, my, my processing does not go for the names. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> Everything else I can tell you like, oh, this is the person that, you know, goes to carnival with my father. This is the person that lives in Canada. This is the person that, you know, did this and that, but I cannot tell you their names. Um, And so it was just a lot for me. And I wish I had had my phone out to take a video of him like skipping around and laughing and joking and them telling stories. And he was talking about his, um, his, it was it his cousin or his God brother. I think it's his cousin. Also, he's like, this man lives, you know, in, you know, in, in St. Thomas. And he's like so smart. He can build things with his hand. He built his own house by himself. And, you know, and he's like, you know, you know, they were just like, just telling jokes from when they were little and telling jokes about my grandmother and how she used to be with them and, you know, stories about living in their village and all this other stuff. And it was just, it was just, it, it just warmed my heart to be able to kind of experience that. And so, uh, I look forward to hearing more stories about my grandmother, um, you know, as a way to help my father grieve and get through his loss. Number three, learn to grow from the loss. I don't want to go too long. Oh shit. It's already an hour in. So, um, every loss has a message whether the message is for you to become more loving and accepting, to learn to become more resilient, to learn to adjust to what you cannot change, or to change something you can, if you can step out of the emotions, once you are getting through the processing the emotions, once you have, once you have accepted the, acknowledged the the feelings and accepted them, gone through them, you cried, you got angry, you did all this stuff, as you're moving forward, 
it's good to be able to step out of that and observe the message clearly. What does this tell you? Can you grow out of it with a little more awareness? Um, and so, what, like, what, like, I think for my father, I think he, what he gained from it is that you should not put off things. If you came, like, I know he didn't think that she was gonna, like, die, die, like, right as he got there, but, like, I think now he's kind of realized, like, if I am taking this, uh, you know, this last minute trip to go see someone who is sick, don't put off going to see them. Go see them immediately. Go talk to that person immediately. Call them immediately because you don't know if they're still going to be there. You don't know. Like, don't put off anything to tomorrow what you can do today, especially when it involves human beings. And so if you're always meaning to call your friend, um, reach out to your, you know, your, your, your child or your old um, or your your siblings or your cousins, do it today. I know, like I said, I don't have a relationship with my father's side of the family, but trust me, I made the efforts. I made the efforts um, a couple, like maybe like a few years ago to kind of just like reach out to them Facebook-wise, like like social media-wise, like do it slow, do it in a way that it made me comfortable. And it wasn't always, it hasn't been 100% uh, reciprocated. And so I decided like, I'm only going, so I unfriended a couple of my of my cousins. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you that right now. I unfriended some of my cousins because they didn't follow me back. I was like, okay, I follow you on Instagram and I'm making comments and, and you know, liking your pictures and you're not reciprocating this back. Like you're not trying to learn more about me or interact with me in a way that could lead to something more um, substantial than, uh, forget you, I don't need to do that. But I may, I know that I, I if they die tomorrow, I'd be just fine with myself because I know I made the effort. And so that's what I've learned from from this loss. And I think, um, you know, you can learn other things uh, from it too. I learned it uh, and there's no way, there's no way in God's green earth that I'm letting my daddy uh, retire fully and Dominique could spend his old ages. He's not, gonna, he's not gonna be living there full time. No way in hell. I already told him I got power of attorney I will put a 5150 hold on you. That's the crazy hold. I will put you in a mental hospital. I will call people and say, my daddy's in there talking to himself and doing all kinds of things that make no sense to me. And I think that he needs to be held for 24 hours so I can make sure that I can stop him from moving there full time because there's no way I'm letting that happen. That's also what I've learned. Um, you also, as I said before, you have to accept that life is for the living. You have to keep living. It takes effort to be to begin to live again after a death of a loved one, but you cannot dwell on the past. You have to keep moving forward. Keep the memories that you have of this person alive by living, living. Number four, replace the negative feelings with positive ones. So this one is interesting. It very much digs into the cognitive uh, part of it. And I got this, I think from psychology today. I think I got either psychology today or the American psychological, no, yeah, American Psychological Association. Either one, you know, the, the information will be in the show notes. Um, but this one talked about cognitive modification is a great tool to be used. Um, that's using statements that focus on looking at the loss as something temporary. So, for example, that was a rough period of my life, but I will move forward. Like using that, like replacing that, using that in your mind to kind of modify your feelings and thoughts towards this death. Or seeing the event as not being your whole life. Like, this will just happen now. It's not forever. This is, I, I, the pain that I'm feeling now is only temporary. And, you know, there will be a time when I will feel better. I might not be 100% okay about the death of my loved one, but I will feel better. I will not always have this, this feeling, this, this, these negative emotions and feelings. Um, or looking at it as a learning lesson, like I said before, that you can learn from loss. Now that I know how to do this or generalize positively, so many things are working out great. So I've learned from this. I have grown from this. Like for me personally, I learned about my grandmother's death, <laughs> right? Um, and then my mother's like, oh, we got to go, you know, plan for the funeral. And I was still processing it. And as soon as she came in to tell me that she had, that we needed to go by, um, look for plane tickets to, for the, to attend the funeral, I got an email on an opportunity that uh, is in the works. And so hopefully by, you know, this time next month or in two podcast time, I'll have some really good news to share with you guys. And so I saw that as like, you know, um, you know, something bad 
can happen, but then something good can also happen too, to kind of balance it out. Uh, sit down. So here, here's how you can help with the cognitive modifications, how you can work on it. So sit down and write a list of what is good or great in your life right now and put it somewhere you can take a look at it on a daily basis until you're at peace with your loss. So write down all the great things that you that are in your life right now, things that you're grateful for and put it on your fridge, put it on your, your bathroom mirror, put it next to your bed, wherever that you're going to see it every day, put it in your office so that you can remember all the great things that are, that are in, that's happening in your life um, until you are fully able to be at peace with the loss of your loved one. Number five, this is the last one. Um, remember and celebrate the lives of your loved ones. They might be gone, but they are not forgotten. They don't have to be forgotten. Okay. Uh, possibilities include doting, donate, donating, sorry, to a favorite charity of the deceased. Like a lot, I've seen a lot of people do that where maybe their, um, their parent or loved one died from like cancer and they'll, uh, you know, to, like ask instead of flowers, can you donate to, you know, the American Cancer Society or like my friend, um, one of my friends, her father died and they opened up a memorial scholarship at his, I think it was his high school. So there was high school or his middle school, one of those, I can't, my brain, <laughs> but he, they opened up a scholarship in his name. Uh, the same thing for my friend whose wife, um, wife and child died. He, he started a foundation and, um, that, you know, you can donate to, uh, as a way to remember her and, and the daughter that they lost. Um, but you can also, uh, frame photos of fun times with your, with your loved one. Uh, you can, um, pass on a family name to a baby. So when my cousin's mother died, my aunt, <laughs> by marriage, when she died, uh, she actually just, and she was pregnant at the time. She, she named her daughter after her mother. And so even though my auntie Octavia is gone, my cousin Octavia is here and she is sassy as ever. <laughs> I think some of y'all have seen Miss Octavia. She's the six year old that was running my life this past summer. Um, and, uh, you can see it on my personal Instagram. That's who that is. Her grandmother, uh, died within the year that she was born and she was named after her grandmother. So, um, so you can pass on the family name so you can always remember them. You can plant a tree, plant a garden, uh, but whatever you choose, it's up to you as long as it allows you to honor the unique relationship in a way that feels right to you. If you feel stuck or overwhelmed by your emotions, it may be helpful to talk with someone again, like I said, but talk about them in a way that you remember all the great things that you, that you experience with this person. What did you love about them to help you cope with your feelings? Um, and so here's some other things that you can do. So here's, um, so those are the five strategies for if you're personally, uh, dealing with, uh, a loss or, or with grief. And in here, I have, um, a few tips for those. If you want to help others who are grieving, so you're not grieving, but, um, if someone you care about has lost someone that they loved, um, this is how you can help them through the grieving process. So you can share the sorrow. So allow them, even encourage them to talk about their feelings of loss and share memories of the deceased. Let them talk. Encourage them to talk. Tell me a story about this person that you lost uh, so that you can process it, even if you have to cry through it, even whatever, just go ahead and tell me. Let's Tell me more about this person that you love that has that is now gone. Um, another thing you can do is don't offer false comfort. Do not, if you don't mean it, don't offer it. I know it seems, it may seem rude not to offer some comfort, uh, to someone who says like, oh, you know, I, I, you know, my parent died or blah, 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 died. But if you don't mean it, don't do it. Okay. Like I always say, if you, if you, um, if you talk it, you better walk it. So, uh, it doesn't help the grieving person when you say it was, it was for the best, <laughs> It was not for the best because this person is gone and this person would prefer for this person to still be here, even if they were suffering, even though they were in pain. Don't offer that up. Okay. I mean, for me, when I think about it, I'm like, well, you know, my grandmother lived a long life. She, she lived a full life. So, um, but I don't need you to tell me that. <laughs> okay. I don't need you to tell me that unless we're, we've already started talking about it and you were just, you know, coming, you know, uh, and you're agreeing with me. Um, or you'll get over it in time. Don't say that either. Don't. 
Instead, offer a simple expression of sorrow and take time to listen. So listen, let them talk about it, but don't be like, it was for the best, they were in pain, or you'll get over it in time. Duh, you will get over it in time. But as I said before, if they don't have a place like social support, they're not going to get over it in the time that you think. They might, as Atiana Jefferson's um, parents did, they might just die with that grief. They might die due to the grief. And so uh, don't offer false um, false comfort uh, allow that person to explain their sorrow, talk about their sorrow, express their sorrow, and listen to them. Take the time to listen. <laughs> Offer practical help. Uh, babysit. If they have kids, cook for them, run errands. All are ways to help someone who is in the midst of grieving. Uh, I recently learned about this service called Meal Train. I, you know, one of my friends had a baby and she was like, hey, everyone, I know everyone wants to offer help and stuff, but the main thing that I know that we need is uh, help with making sure that we continue to stay fed when we have like a newborn that's going to keep us up and we have a toddler. And so uh, I thought that was great. And it was a way to go and like visit them. And if you couldn't be physically there, it was a way to show that you were thinking of them and were trying to help out. Like, uh, I think that's actually a really great way too for like grieving processes. Like if you know someone is grieving and they're probably, you know, like, especially like, I mean, unlike my daddy, my daddy liked to cook. My daddy would cook at a drop of dime. My daddy can cook. But if you have, you know, someone who the person they lost was the person that cooked for them, the best thing you can do is to bring food over for them. Or uh, with Meal Train, what's great about it is that they can tell you what kind of food they like. So you're not bringing over, you know, 15,000 lasagnas that they didn't ask for. I didn't ask for that lasagna. Thanks for bringing it, but I ain't eating it. That is the worst. I I hate people giving me gifts that I did not ask for. Like, especially if it's not like with me in mind. Like if you if you know me, you're gonna give me a great gift. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna appreciate it. But if you don't know me and you just buy me some general gift, don't give it to me because I'm probably gonna give it to somebody else or give it to charity. Um, and so the same thing with that, like find out how you can practically help them um and and while they're grieving. Uh, Also, be patient. Remember that it can take a long time to recover from a major loss. So make yourself available again to talk. They're not going to get over it tomorrow. They're not going to get over it in a month. They may not get over it in a year. So be there, be available to them to talk about it. Also, encourage professional help when necessary. If you see that the the person that you know um, is dealing with a loss pretty badly and they're just not getting over it, this is where you offer, you know, you do not hesitate to tell them, you know what, I think that, um, it'd be great if you talk to this support group that I, that I learned about, or you should reach out to your doctor, or you should probably talk to a therapist because I've been talking to you and I feel like I'm not able to, you know, give you the type of support that you need. And I feel like some of it is a little bit deeper. And so do not hesitate to tell them to recommend professional help, uh, when you feel someone is just experiencing too much pain to cope with alone. And with that, I am done with this topic Um, and it's longer than I expected, but I think, you know, it's a serious topic and I felt like also for me that I needed to be able to get that out. This is helpful for me. Like I said, like people need to deal with their grief by talking and this has been helpful for me. And again, it might've been, you know, four days late, but it's here (laughs) as my favorite, my favorite uh, uh, quote is, Uh, He may not come when you call, but he is always on time, always on time. I may not, you know, show up when I say I'm going to, but I am there when I'm supposed to be there. Okay. Tardy T is there when she's supposed to be there. Tardy T gets her stuff out when she needs to get her stuff out, when it is meant to get out um, and not necessarily, you know, when it's expected. Okay. Monday, I couldn't, as I said, I didn't have it. I didn't, I didn't have it. I didn't, I don't got it for you. Today, I feel like I fully have it for you. I have, I got all my stuff together. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. There won't be a figure this out. Actually, let me let me just tell you, figure this out. So let me, this is, this is real quick. And this is with uh, my travel experience. So figure this out for me, right? <sighs> Why is it that some of these airlines just can't communicate with each other? I don't care. If I buy a ticket through one source, Y'all should work that shit out for me when it comes to extra fees and baggage fees. I had a carry-on bag, right? Because I was only going to be there for three days. I had a carry-on bag and we had like a check bag where we put some of our toiletries, even though I could have just put my toiletries in like travel size. 
When we got to that Liat plane that was leaving from Puerto Rico to um, Antigua, why the hell did they say, "Mm -mm, that's not a carry-on bag. You're going to have to check that because it's over 15 pounds. Where the hell am I going with a bag that is only 15 pounds? I'm taking an overnight trip at that point. So because my carry-on bag that was fine on JetBlue but not fine on Liat was over 15 pounds, I had to pay 60 American dollars. 60 American dollars for this carry-on bag. And if I had just tagged, if I had just checked in my carry-on bag from Boston, I wouldn't have to pay that extra fee. And so y'all figure that out for me. Figure out why they can't figure that stuff out for me. Figure out why I can't ask the truck. Can I ask the travel agency for them to pay me back for the $60 that I didn't expect to pay for a carry-on bag that was probably like 23 pounds or 25 pounds goodness and some of it had stuff that I was carrying down for my dad for the funeral can I get a bereavement discount on the baggage fees oh gosh oh that's why I had to put I had to take that money out of my emergency fund I was like "Mm, you ain't coming out of my my fund account and you ain't coming out of my bills account you have to come out of the emergency funds because that was an emergency that I did not see coming (laughs) <laughs> but on the way back, I sure did have that bag at 15 pounds. You know why? Because there was nothing in it. <laughs> there was nothing in it. I barely had clothes in it. All the dirty clothes was in another bag that we checked. And my toiletries was in that same bag that we checked. And the bag that I carried on to the small Liat plane was less than 15 pounds because there was nothing in it. And I was like, why am I even carrying this? I could like lift up the, the carry on with like two fingers. Anyway, with that, I'm done. I hope you guys got something from this. I really do appreciate you guys listening to my podcast and sharing with people. We are definitely growing as a group. I have plenty planned for this year um, that I hope you guys will enjoy and support and share with others. Uh, If you would like to talk more with me, you can always hit me up on the email. Oh, uh, uh, my email is in the description in the in the the show notes. You can also join the Facebook page for the podcast where you can have discussions with me there. I think I'm trying to I think I'm gonna try to open up a group. I think that's what I'm really looking for. But um, I think I want to grow the page first and see if because people really don't like don't like respond to my stuff as much on the page and I'm like is that because I need to make a group but I don't know if a group will work if the page doesn't get much engagement so if you want to dialogue with me on this you can hit me up on there or you can hit me up in the dms of my instagram which is also in the show notes uh if you would like to know learn uh yeah If you'd like to be kept up to date on what's going on in the podcast with me, I would like to get some, you know, inspirational life quotes for me because I'm all about that. Okay, you can join. You should join the figure out your life Friday newsletter. There wasn't one last week. Of course, again, it was my grandmother's funeral. So um, but there will be one this week and it's every other week uh, where you can get all that information you can sign up at figure out your life dot com slash newsletter uh if you don't want to type all that in again you can sign up for it through the show notes just click on the link and you will get the newsletter so we can grow as a group and you know keep in touch and so with that i am done i hope you guys have a absolutely blessed and happy um day morning afternoon evening wherever you are i just want you guys to be healthy and safe and i will talk to you guys next week all right guys bye